every thought we think not only has an impact on us, it has an impact on this world, on the cosmos, on the galaxies, and beyond. It's a vibration. Just like this bowl, when I tap this bowl, vibration continues to travel. That vibration, that frequency continues to travel whether you hear it or not. It's that ripple effect and it goes on and on and on. <clears throat> Did you write down you believe to be your number one obstacle? Do I have a show of hands? Everybody have something written down? Are you have you completed that? No. What is the number one obstacle? The thing that keeps you from creating and enjoying what you desire. If you're not sure what that is, I'm going to offer you your answer. And it's like this. Why O U? That may seem really obvious, but it's true. So how do we get out of our way? Literally and figuratively, right? How do we move from this place, this place right here, and step into a new way of being? That looked pretty easy, didn't it? How do we do that? We've already been talking about that this morning. The many different ways that we can do that. In fact, I think you probably already have all the tools you need. We could just end the workshop seminar right now. And you could say, okay, I've got all the tools, all the things. My number one obstacle is me. So how do I navigate me? Where do you begin? How about right where you are? Because it's very easy to say, well, you know, when I lose 10 pounds, then I'll start. When I start having better thoughts, then I'll start working on having better thoughts. When the spring equinox gets here, I'll begin then. Let's see, when's my birthday? Perhaps when my birthday comes, that would be a great <laughs> gift to give myself. Is there a wedding coming up? Is there something, some special engagement that I'm going to? Am I going on vacation? Let's see. Let me look at the calendar. How much time do I have left? Ow, wee. I better get started now. What is it that you're started on? What is it that you started on? What is it that you're trying to do? Do you really know? Do you really know what it is, and I'm going to ask a question like this, do you really know what it is you want? Yes? No? Maybe? Perhaps? Some days? Some moments? Not sure? Group coaching! <laughs> Clarity! Clarity, clarity, clarity. Are you too tired? You want somebody to do it for you? <laughs> you want the magic pill or the magic drink? Is it about a diet? What would you be doing differently than what you're doing right now if you were in what? 
a different body, if your scale gave you a different number, if a certain size of clothing went on your body, what would you be doing differently then than you are now? <clears throat> are you holding yourself prisoner with that belief that you can't do anything right now that would be similar to whatever it is that you have decided cannot happen until you get to that place. I cannot feel better until that scale says so. I cannot feel better until a particular person tells me, hey, you look really hot. I cannot feel better until what? What is it that you're looking for? To give you what? Validation? Permission? A compliment? What is it? On a scale of 1 to 10 right now, 10 being just awesome and fantastic and amazing and 1 pretty much not so high, not so great, where are you right now on that scale? Write that down for yourself. Where would you put yourself right now? Once again, these are the kinds of things that you begin to use as feedback for yourself. We need feedback. We need to know. If we're saying we want to go over here, we want to create a new experience of us, how do we know how we're doing? How do we know if something has shifted or changed. And when we get that feedback, it allows us to feel better about ourselves. And that's what we're going for here, is it not? Perhaps. Do you see where I'm going with this? You are really called, and I'm really going to encourage you, and I will even push you to get really clear about what it is you're desiring. And this is where learning how to work with meditation, learning how to work with mindfulness, learning how to be the observer of your thoughts so that you can know what's going on with you in any moment is truly so empowering. It's learning how to use the power of your mind. In a few moments, I'm going to read a couple things that truly point to research that says your mind does not know the difference. Like what I shared earlier about releasing weight years ago. But I was so enthralled in that coaching experience to where when I got to that final four and I had gotten to a place of feeling better, I wasn't looking at a number on the scale. I was looking at a place of, I feel really good in my body now. It moves when I have a request for it to move. And I feel free in it. Freedom. I think of Jimi Hendrix, Woodstock, wasn't it? Freedom. I love that. It's about freedom. For me, it's about no longer being a prisoner, bound by all your stuff, bound by your body. It's being free. And when I went to that coaching convention in a body that was feeling really good to me, and I was exploring opportunities to be hired as a coach, it was truly one of the most humbling experiences I ever had. Here I was, uh, say how old was I at the time? 43? 44, getting ready to be 44? Yeah, 43, getting ready to turn 44. You know how many new college coaches come in at 44 years of age? Pretty much zero. <laughs> unless you happen to know somebody or you're related to somebody and they're saying, hey, did I believe in myself? I really did. I knew 
And this is the other thing. What do you know about you? I asked you that question earlier. I knew that I could be one of the best damn coaches that was ever in college women's history. I knew that about myself. Because I told you, I tapped into something that I believed in about me because there wasn't much to pick from. But that was one thing I knew that I was good at. Those kids taught me a lot back then. And I knew I was good at it because even some of the players that did not have the actual talent and ability to play basketball, they were some of the best kids out on that floor because they gave it their all. They gave everything they had. And I knew they could inspire me to get my butt to that coaching convention. And no matter what, I would always be their coach. I would always be a winner in their eyes and in my own eyes. Nobody wanted me to coach their team, are you kidding? Because in the world out there, I didn't meet their criteria. Did I come home and go back to all the buffets in Las Vegas where I was living at the time? Where I had taken myself up to the 300 pounds and where I had brought myself back to a physical weight that felt good in my body, going to the very same buffets, but making what? Different choices. Life was still the same out there. Who was different? What was different? Me. Me. What's that book, Wherever You Go, There You Are? I think John Cabot Zinn wrote that one. You take you with you everywhere you go. Sometimes it gets a little crowded, doesn't it? Sometimes it's a party. Perhaps. Is it a celebration or a pity party? So I came back from that coaching convention. I was like, all righty then. They didn't want me to coach them, so I created my own experience around that. That's what I said a minute ago. I knew in my heart and in every cell of my body that I was a coach. I'd always been a coach. And later on down the road, when I became a life coach, wow, you create your own experience. The only limitations that you have are the ones you place upon yourself. What's that number one obstacle? So, it's time, if you're ready, to create a new relationship with you. To begin to pay attention to the words that you speak to yourself. To begin to invest in you so that the return you're getting is one that truly does what? enrich you. It's an endless return. It's endless, just like the universe. Because it's not about so much what you want. It's about what you become. It's that part of you that continues to seek that out in some way. That's why it's change your mind, change your body, change your life. It's that inside, outside experience. And nothing changes until you do. And that's what today is all about. That's what every moment is all about. If you're exhausted right now, depleted, perhaps down in the dumps or just kind of in a place of, we call it the infamous funk. You're just in a funk. Maybe you've been in a funk for a while. Maybe you feel stagnant. 
wherever you are, are you willing to say, wherever I am is okay? Or do you find that voice from somewhere, perhaps that you've taken on, that is just going on with self-criticisms and self-judgments and the supposed tos and the shoulds and the why nots? Becoming more aware, waking up, And we do it once again, how? One breath at a time. One breath at a time. Are you aware that you're breathing right now? Like I mentioned earlier with your breath, very powerful a wonderful way in any moment when you're like <coughs> either a deer in headlights or a deer out in the meadow and everything's peaceful and calm. Your breath just returns you again and again and again to each moment, moment by moment knowing that is where you make those changes are in those moments. In the now, in the present. And after a while, you stream a number of those moments together. And before you know it, my day, what a great moment I had today. It was moment after moment after moment accumulated into this amazing experience. It was momentous. And perhaps, my guess would be, you had a lot of momentum. That moment word shows up everywhere, doesn't it? How amazing is that? That is so cool. At least I think it is. What do you think? 